Hi and uh, welcome to this uh, LSX Nordic uh, presentation. Uh, my name is Anders Nyholm. I'm a client relationship manager at uh, Performa Group. Uh, today we are going to talk about development with the end in mind and how to bridge the value of death. What we will uh, cover today is uh, first uh, a short introduction of uh, Performa Group. Um, then we go into to the challenges uh, you can uh, get when you're uh, doing drug development and, and challenges uh, related to, to startups. Uh, then we're going to talk about, about the concept of, of this uh, presentation uh, and what I mean with the valley of death and how that relates to uh, target product profile. And in the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we at Performa Group can support you in your product uh, development process. Performa Group is one of the major service providers within the pharma industry. Uh, we have a legacy back from 2001 and have grown since then and today uh, we have more than 60 unique services and and with the staff with more than 1,200 people. Performa Group is located uh, all over the world. Uh, we have uh, our head office in, in US, Kansas City, um, and have a big appearance both in, in US and Europe, but also in, in Asia Pacific. Uh, and from a um, drug development perspective, um, we can support your development process uh, in, in, within all our core service area, uh, regulatory affairs, life science consulting, pharmacovigilance and medical information. And uh, if we look into to more in, in detail what, what we can uh, provide within those service area, we have a regulatory affairs uh, with the uh, regulatory strategy plans, uh, everything related to, to submission of, of the documentation or writing of documentation for, for dossiers. Uh, we have experts in, in non-clinical, clinical, PKPD and CMC. And we can uh, support you uh, when you have seven, seven scientific advice with, with health authorities. Uh, within life science consulting, uh, we have a team uh, that we call product and Pro process life cycle management uh, that are spe specialized in, in drug development from a CMC perspective. Uh, we have also a strong uh, QA team uh, with, with specialists in quality assurance, both from a clinical and, and commercial perspective. Uh, and we have both QP and RPs in our teams and can support QA both from a small molecule, uh, biologics, ATMP and so on. And of course, we also have a strong engineering team uh, within our life science consulting uh, where that can support you with uh, qualifications, validations, um, uh, setups of, of uh, plants and so on, and also with, with uh, data integrity and, and um, uh, CSV support. For pharmacovigilance, uh, we have the whole pa package, I would say, uh, both from a clinical perspective with a clinical safety and from a commercial perspective, uh, we can support you all the way how to how to say with uh, uh, with the whole PSMF package and with uh, QPPVs, um, and the last uh, but also the biggest uh, service area is the medical information part, where we have a um, contact center located all over the globe uh, that can support uh, your patients with medical information services uh, 24 seven all days a year. So um, if we go into more about the drug development process and the challenges uh, uh, that can arise there, um, I believe for many of you this is nothing new. 
uh, if we look into to the process going from early development to, to commercialization, uh, we usually have a lot of candidates in the early stages, thousands of different candidates. And then in the end, uh, we have hopefully one product um, that can go to market uh, uh, 10 to 15 years later and with a development cost of billions of dollars sometimes. Um, and by uh, having a more structured way in your drug development process, uh, there's a bigger probability uh, that your candidate can go all the way. It doesn't mean that all of those southern candidates in the early development actually should go all the way to, to a, a commercial uh, stage, but there are a lot of products out there that have an actual patient need um, that are maybe are uh, disappear on on the way uh, because um, the drug development process has not been uh, that outlined or or streamlined as 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 you can expect. So if we look in more into details regarding um, the startup scene and, and, and the challenges uh, that the small startup companies um, um, have uh, going into to this drug development process, how to say. Um, this, these kind of, of um, uh, startups can have issues maybe with uh, setting the priorities. Uh, if you haven't done this this before, it can be really hard to understand what actually is prioritized to take your product to the next step. Um, having the right partnership uh, will, to take your product further in the development process, uh, you need to have um, partnership with investors, you need to have partnership with CEOs, you need to have partnership with CMOs, CDMOs and so on. And to have that network and understand what partner that actually is beneficial for you can be a really challenge. Uh, decision making is another point. Um, uh, decisions you take early in your development process can have big impact uh, on the end point if you actually will get a result or not. Um, and if you haven't make this before, it can be really challenging to understand what is the right or wrong decision uh, early in your development. Uh, cost expectations. For every stage uh, in your development process, uh, your cost for development will increase exponentially more or less uh, for clinical trials, for, for product development and so on. And to estimate those costs and to understand uh, what co cost you will have for your development process can be a challenge you have if you haven't done that before. Uh, and practical knowledge, of course, um, there's one thing to have a theoretical understanding of the development process, but if you haven't done it before, it can be really hard to understand the hurdles coming forward. Uh, and market access, uh, this is something I'm, I'm usually is, is, is keen on for our clients to understand that also early in the development uh, of, of, a, of a novel product, you need to understand who are your, your, your patients, who are your payers um, uh, for this product, uh, to actually have a, a clear view uh, of the process and how you can, can meet those, those needs uh, for, a, for a commercial product. Um, and focus in the development process, of course, really important to understand what you need to focus on so that you have a, a streamlined process taking uh, your product to the next step uh, on as short time as possible. And these are some of the reasons uh, why about 90% of all um, startups uh, fail. So um, when we talk about the concept value of death, uh, what we mean then is that uh, the further you go in your development process, the cost for your, your development uh, will increase exponentially. And if you have a control over those costs uh, and the variables that impact the costs, 
uh, there is a potential risk uh, that the product or, or the, um, the product will be killed before it comes to a commercial phase because uh, the costs are too high to, to actually allow the, the risk of going further. Um, and the, this can be for products that actually have a patient need uh, and actually have um, a, 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 a commercial base that actually could be viable in a commercial phase, uh, but are uh, killed because we don't have control over the, the costs in the development phase. So uh, when we talk about drug development with beginning with the end in mind, uh, we can describe it um, uh, as uh, in a general perspective we have a start, what we want to achieve, then we have a, a planning um, part and then we have an end point based on that planning. If we're talking more uh, from a pharmaceutical or pharma perspective, uh, what we mean with the beginning then we talk about the target product profile uh, that I will discuss more in detail later and then we have the drug development roadmap and in the end we have the patient uh, and, and taking the product to the patient in the end. So uh, what is then target product profile? Uh, a target product profile can be described as, as um, as the definition of your product, when you are early in your development and you have your candidate, uh, what are the endpoints? What do you want to achieve uh, with, with that product uh, to take it to, to a, a commercial phase or take it to the next step in a clinical phase? Uh, and the target product profile can be uh, divided in, in uh, four different areas or profiles. Uh, we have the characteristics profile. Uh, that can be said as a description of the physical uh, chemical parameters of the product. Uh, the formulation, the volume, potency, dosage um, uh, and shelf life and so on. Uh, then we have the safety profile. Uh, what are, uh, how to say, the, the safety risks with your product uh, from a, a microbial perspective or uh, the manufacturing pro uh, process, do we have anything that can uh, Im Im impose um, uh, uh, safety risks in, in the manufacturing process? Uh, the impurity profile of the API, do we have uh, impurities that, that, that can impact the safety of the product and so on? And then we have the, the user profile uh, describing um, uh, the intended use uh, of the product, the indications, uh, the, the treatment timings, the properties from a pharmacogenetic and pharmacodynamic uh, perspective uh, and so on. And finally, but not last, we have the business profile uh, describing uh, what clinical milestones you, you need to achieve and the commercial milestones and, and, and the market projections. Uh, what, what are the markets, who are the patients and who are the payers? And uh, also the, the supply chain and the cost of goods from, from an economical perspective. So when we talk about development with the end in mind using TPP, what are we talking about then? Um, we talk about uh, starting with uh, compiling a target product profile uh, for the product and based on that target product profile we define the drug development roadmap uh, defining how we should uh, meet those targets that we have in the TPP and uh, the drug development roadmap can be divided in three different pillars uh, we have the manufacturing and formulation development from the, the TPP we have the characteristics, the safety and the user and also the business. Uh, how should we develop our formulation studies, our in vitro studies to meet those targets? Um, how should we do the scale up from, from a lab scale to a preclinical scale, a clinical scale and, and, and onto commercialization? 
and uh, what CMOs have um, the capability and the technology to support that. And then we have the, um, the clinical uh, development uh, to meet our targets from a safety and, and user uh, perspective. Uh, how should we develop our, our clinical studies from a safety, efficacy, efficacy uh, pharmacogenetic and, and dynamic perspective and so on. And then, of course, we have the business part and the business strategy. Uh, what budget do we have to, to do this development process? What are the timelines to do it? Uh, the, and, and, and then we have the, the market access again. Uh, what are the patients? Who are the payers? Uh, and how should we access that market uh, um, to, to meet that uh, medical need? Uh, and then we have uh, the cost of goods and the supply chain. How do we most efficiently set up the supply chain? Uh, both from an economical perspective, so we don't have um, a, a lot of, of cost of goods in the supply chain, uh, for example, uh, expensive products and so on, but also from, from um, a timing perspective, uh, so we don't delay our clinical trials and we don't delay our commercialization launch uh, due to we have a really complex uh, supply chain. Yes, uh, and this is uh, kind of an example uh, how we can use the target product profile um, to define our manufacturing process. Um, and based on uh, the profiles we discussed earlier, the characteristics, the safety, the user and the fin financial profile, um, we can define what we need to achieve from a manufacturing perspective. Uh, for the characteristics, what kind of um, formulations do we need um, from a safety profile? Uh, what API do we use? Uh, what um, uh, process do we have for doing the API and what impurities can we have in that? And how do we control uh, uh, the safety issues with the, uh, the, uh, with, the, um, with the product? And the user profile. Um, how is this uh, the intended use of the product? Um, should it be an instant release or extended release? How is, is it applied? Is it a parole product or is, is it an application on the skin? Uh, that will impact, of course, the manufacturing process. And then we have uh, the financial part with, with the cost of goods and, and uh, streamlining of, of the supply chain so we don't uh, delay um, the stages in the manufacturing. So based on our target product profile, we do the, do the process development uh, and, and then based on that we define uh, a control strategy to make sure that we have um, understanding of, of the product we, we are um, manufacturing. And then uh, Based on that, we can do our tech transfer from the lab scale, uh, preclinical, clinical, and then uh, commercial. And in the end, uh, we will have a, a conformant manufacturing process uh, that are qualified to, to do uh, the, the product we need uh, from a clinical or commercial perspective. So how do we actually bridge this value of death? By having um, a clear definition of your product and what you want to achieve with the target product profile. We can then uh, do a drug development roadmap uh, that is, is the plan how you will take your product to the next step. And that means we will avoid unnecessary costs and delays because we don't have control uh, of the development plan, how to say, and we will avoid um, killing the product because we don't have control of the development process. And this will give a clearer uh, vision and understanding of the products, uh, minimize risk of, of uh, financial, uh, financial risks and failure risks. Uh, it will accelerate the drug development uh, timelines um, and minimize development risks. And we have a better control of the development process. 
So how can we support you in your uh, process development? We have a broad uh, network of expertise in multiple areas in, in pharmaceutical development, uh, CMC, regulatory affairs, uh, clinical uh, uh, and PV and, and quality assurance. Um, we work with a clear communication with our clients um, to and internally to understand what you actually need and how we should achieve that. Uh, we have done this multiple times, so we have a good understanding of, of the cost estimates of the drug development process and can also uh, help you do cost savings by avoiding mistakes or, or, or taking the wrong path, how to say. Um, and the most critical part here, I think, is, is the understanding of our clients' needs. We are always client-focused and always want to do uh, the best for our, our clients. Uh, we work with an integrated development process that, that uh, assures that we can work with all those experts we have in an integrated way. Uh, and we are transparent in, in our um, workflow and what we do. And we're also flexible to, to the client's needs and we understand that, that the things can happen during the road that need to, you need to be flexible in, in where you're going, how to say. Um, and of course, focusing on, on, on the development and focusing what's important to take the products in the next step in your development. Uh, and by that we can deliver uh, a service with high quality, high efficiency, uh, and lower your cost in the development process. Uh, and this is a, a typical setup how we work with, with these kind of, of assignments uh, for um, taking the product to the next step, how to say. Uh, we often start with a, with a workshop together with the client uh, to understand uh, the product and to understand the client's needs and what you want to achieve. And based on that, together with you, uh, we will do a target product profile. And from that target product profile, we support you with, with developing your drug development roadmap together with project management, management and with subject matter experts in these areas. And based on that, we can support you in delivering uh, clinical trial materials uh, uh, that can support your, your um, uh, documentations for your dossiers. Um, and this is also another way of seeing this integrated process. Uh, we have uh, a QA experience, we have the CMC experience, the RA experience, the clinical PV, uh, the supply chain and procurement part, and also the market access. Uh, to take the product to the next phase in your, in your development. So this is um, a short summary of what we talked about today. Uh, the target product profile and the drug development roadmap um, that can uh, support you, for instance, with your IND, your IMPD, taking the product to the next stage uh, getting clinical trial materials, uh, accelerate your drug development process, uh, support you in your market access strategy, uh, attracting investors and, and reduce cost and, and time. Thank you very much for listening in to this uh, presentation. And remember that we at Performer Group can always support you in taking a product to the next stage, wherever you are in your development process. Thank you.